CataractCoach.com. White cataract through a small rexus. Sneaky, a small pupil, weak design support. It's a tough case. I guess here's Dr. Nascimento from Brazil, and you can see this patient has a small pupil. Some posterior sneaky there. Here's that Brazilian method of doing two incisions at the same time, getting that keratome in and holding the eye with it while using the uh, side port blade to make the paracentesis. So there are your two incisions that are made. And then now you gotta break those sneaky. Looks like a very white cataract, probably an intumescent cataract. Patient looks to be on the younger side, just based on those eyelashes there. So probably some anesthetic or lidocaine, phenylephrine, epinephrine going inside the eye and breaking the sneaky. In this case, the sneaky are not too adherent. So just a sweep with that cannula looks to be sufficient to break the sneaky there. And there's the one last spot and that's broken too. Now in a case like this, I would tend to stretch out the pupil and then make a significantly larger capsorexis. I'd aim for a five millimeter rexis. But in the case that's gonna be presented here, Dr. Nascimento is just going to do a rexis within the confines of the pupil. And certainly that works. It just makes the surgery a little bit tougher. So tripan blue dye going in to stain the anterior lens capsule. Now, a lot of surgeons would also use a pupil expansion device, maybe a pupil ring, maybe iris hooks, something of this nature to help open up that pupil. Again, perfectly acceptable. Do whatever's in your comfort zone. So now here's the viscoelastic going inside the eye, dispersive viscoelastic. Now the pupil got a little bit bigger there, so probably maybe a four and a half millimeter pupil, let's say. And let's see what's gonna happen now, fixating the eye and going in with the forceps. And let's see our rexus size. So we can see if that's a four and a half millimeter pupil, my estimation, that's a much smaller rexus. And now a spiral technique, I like the spiral technique. And you can see there's not too much intumescent lens milk or lens fluid leaking out. So he's gonna enlarge that rexus by doing that spiral technique and bring it out. And let's say he's gonna end up with about a four millimeter capsule rexus, let's say. And that looks pretty good, nice and intact. So again, that spiral out technique, very nicely done. Now, let's see what's gonna happen next here. So a little balanced salt solution going inside, maybe a little high resection. Nucleus appears to spin pretty freely, probably because of all that liquefied lens cortex. And so just sweeping it around, this nucleus shouldn't have too much density, should be pretty fairly easy to remove here. So a little more hydro dissection, rotation of that lens nucleus. This thing is rotating pretty freely. And now a little more viscoelastic going inside the eye perhaps, trying to bring that nucleus up, or is that more balanced salt solution? And you can see the main position here is for the left hand, so it looks like it's a left-handed surgeon, or at least holding the phaco probe, or going to hold the phaco probe in that left hand. And so now, a lot of time spent really freeing up that nucleus, that's gonna facilitate things. It's gonna make nucleus removal a whole lot easier. And here's a little more viscoelastic. And I think we're ready for that phaco probe, let's do this. So here's a phaco probe in the left hand, and it looks like a chopper of some design in the right hand. And aspirating out some of that lens material, especially that liquefied lens cortex or some of the softer parts of the lens. And then now, buzzing over the phaco probe, gonna get a good purchase here. And not quite yet, maybe making a little bit of a, of a pit there centrally, and that central pit can help to chop the nucleus. You can just tell by the motions, this is a very experienced surgeon. This is not a new surgeon. This surgeon has many thousands of cases of experience. You can just tell by the things that are being done here. Look at that, tilting the nucleus up, nice chop technique, chop, chop, and more chop. Gotta break that nucleus into smaller pieces. And this effortless uh, operation here, it really gives away that the surgeon is very experienced. So I don't know the surgeon personally, but I really am enjoying watching this video. So now I've got a little piece of the nucleus being broken off and look how the surgeon is very carefully staying in that central zone, staying away from the iris, operating very centrally there, obviously the deepest part of the anterior chamber, the most working room, and obviously also away from the pupil. So I'm not gonna catch the iris at any time. And just nice chops, very methodical, Really nicely done. Looks, looks like the surgeon is sitting superiorly. And again, phaco probe left hand and chopper in the right. About half the nucleus is already gone. And this is going to proceed pretty quickly. So what gives it away too is also that second hand, that non-dominant hand, the right hand in this case, the dexterity is very high. The ability to chop and manipulate, move that nucleus around is really quite excellent. And so now the last bit of nucleus is going to come out. 
There's one piece left. And again, it's all being done through that smaller pupil and that small capsular rexus. So again, this is not risky. This is a surgeon who knows exactly what's going on and is very much able to adapt to the smaller pupil and the smaller rexus and have a beautiful result there. Now the capsular bag looks pretty much cleaned up. Not a whole lot left. We're going to go bimanual cortex removal here with bimanual INA. And you can see the infusion is going into that main incision. And if you're careful enough to float in that incision, you don't actually need a second paracentesis. So now just using that infusion to help squirt around a little bit more. And now the aspirator can go there on the right hand and go underneath the capsule edge and go into the capsule bag equator. Hands being switched now and the infusion in the right hand. And now the aspirator can go inside the left hand too. There's the aspirator on the left hand. And it's interesting that the surgeon did it this way. And I think you're going to get a hydro implantation of the eye. Well, next, yep, there it is. So fixating the eye and infusing the eye with the right hand. And there it is, orienting the lens appropriately. You know the 7L rule. That lens is in correct position. Looks great. Put it in the capture bag. And you can see that's definitely a small rexus. So you're looking at about a 4 millimeter rexus, maybe even slightly smaller in the setting of this eye with a 6 millimeter optic. A little bit of wrinkling in there with the capsule, indicating some degree of zonal relaxity. This case was expertly performed. Beautiful case. And what's our take-home message here? You can definitely do a smaller rexus. In a case like this, I would have done a big rexus. I would have made a 5 millimeter rexus bigger than the pupil dilation. Remember, using that Jedi mind force, you can just make it larger. In this case, however, Dr. Nascimento did a 4 millimeter rexus, and it worked out beautifully with that impressive skill set. So bottom line is do what makes you happy and what's safest in your hands.